There is something that I have been so indecisive about lately. I feel like it's driving me slightly insane. It possibly is driving Dustin insane too. And it's not what should we have for dinner tonight, which is totally a question that comes up every fucking day. And I never know how to answer it. And I know anybody listening to this can probably relate. I hate that question and deciding. Can somebody else please figure that out? But my decision is a little bit bigger than what are we having for dinner tonight. And I keep going back and forth. And lately, I just feel like it's using up so much of my mental capacity that I can't focus and show up in all aspects of my life in the way that I want to. And studies actually show that we have a limited amount of mental energy per day. And once we reach that limit, our decision-making skills are, they plummet. Um, and I feel like I reach that limit of mental energy, like by lunch. And a big reason is because of this one decision. So today's episode, we are talking about being indecisive. And I just want to say right from the beginning, if you have any tips that help you make decisions you're confident in, I want to know about them. Please email me cheers at crystal or follow me on Instagram at crystal uncorked DM me share your secrets. I need to know. And let's dive in. Hello, I'm Crystal Vilkaitis. I'm a curious wine loving entrepreneur who loves to learn and have open and honest conversations. Join me and my amazing guests as we talk about all sorts of relatable business and life stuff. It's my goal that you'll have fun, learn something new and get inspired. Wine is not required, but is recommended. This is Crystal Uncorked. Okay, so what I am drinking today is Fogland. This is a 2019 cab from Columbia Valley uh, in Washington. This is sustainably farmed. And I recently did a podcast episode that's actually going to be out after this one. So it'll be out next week with Aubrey Terrazas, who is a wine sommelier. And I loved our conversation. Um, we talked a little bit about sustainably sourced wine. So you'll learn more about that next week. Um, but this is a really bold wine. Um, it's super smooth though, and I just want to read their tasting notes. Notes of dark fruit, plum, and black cherry give the wine an air of familiarity, while a hint of black currant lends it a distinctive moody edge. I feel like whoever wrote this description obviously is very good at their job and knows wine because they nailed it. Like that is exactly what I taste. It's a really great bottle. And, um, I would recommend this. I get this from my wink subscription. I'll link to that. Uh, but you might be able to find it in other places. I do recommend it. Now, before I get into talking about this big decision and all the indecisiveness that I've had lately, I just want to say that yesterday, I was struggling so bad to have motivation to do anything on my to-do list. I was just, I mean, in full transparency, I'm PMSing. So it was like a day that my body just did not want to show up and have energy. It wanted to lay in bed. It wanted to be nurtured. And I just mentally was so drained. I had a headache and I ended up canceling a couple meetings and took almost a three hour nap, which I've not done in like forever. I woke up feeling better, but I really felt like mentally I was just so gone. I was so tired. And of course, I'm feeling like all this stress of like, oh my gosh, there's a million things you need to be doing, which you're going to hear about in this podcast episode. Uh, but I just, something inside of me was like, I, I can't, I physically can't do anything else but this. I need to just watch friends and sleep and lay in bed. And that is what I did. And then today, I am doing more then what's on my to-do list? Like I've done the to-do list and I've added things and I'm taking care of business and I have more energy. I feel better. So if anybody is like me who struggles with taking a break, resting, um, and feeling guilty about it, oh my gosh, please just take the break. Please rest. It's something I'm continuously working on and being able to release. I feel like it's like one of my big life lessons. Um, and I hope that I can just like release the guilt uh, because it's so needed. 
It is so required for us to be our best selves, to show up what we need to. We have to have rest. So just wanted to say that real quick. Um, let me take a sip of this delicious wine. And um, let's talk about my big decision. So Dustin and I are moving to Colorado, which you probably know if you've been listening to the show. And originally, we were going to be moving in February of 2022. Then it got moved up to January of 2022. We bought a house back in October of 2020. We bought the model home and the developer has been renting the house back from us so they can still show the model. And they basically, they're ready to hand over the keys a month early in January. And I have just been really like feeling pulled to go home. I'm from Loveland, Colorado, uh, born and raised, lived 24 years in Northern Colorado. Most part, I was outside of Denver for a couple of years too, but um, my family's there, my whole day outside of my family and amazing friends are there. And I'm just really feeling like I need to be close to family, especially my grandma. And so uh, Dustin and I decided to leave three months earlier. And so we are leaving in October. And by the time this episode is released, we will be leaving in like a couple of weeks. So all of a sudden things have really sped up. And the big decision is that we have been just going back and forth on, and I feel like weighing all aspects of it. And it's a big one. So of course it's going to take time, but it's, do we sell our house in California? Do we rent our house in California? Or do we do a vacation home like a VRBO? And we have gone back and forth so many times. And I will say that we have done more work and effort on actually renting it or VRBOing it than we have selling. Like we definitely ran comps in the area. Dustin's a real estate agent here in California. Um, and we'll still be practicing here when we move to Colorado. So if anybody needs an agent, he's great. Let him know. Um, but the mark, the prices, like, you know, probably depending on where you live, real estate is booming. The prices are absurd. We could get a really great price for our home. We completely updated it two years ago. It's a high demand neighborhood. It's a single level, which is great for seniors. It's a corner lot. Like it's just a really amazing property. So, but like we have this thought that we would like to move back to California at some point. So why would we get rid of our property if we're going to come back? Right. And so many people have told me here in California that, you know, once you get in, like don't get out because it's so hard to get into the California real estate, um, proper or a real estate market. And I can see that just the amount that this house has appreciated and all the homes that we've actually bought here, they've just appreciated. It's crazy. So, you know, there's that aspect, but will we, be, will we be back? Like, I don't know. We question that. I don't know the future. Um, what if we just like love Colorado and I've got some ideas for us being out there that might keep us there longer, um, which, you know, hope to share that in future episodes. But, you know, I, we don't know. And I'm a total sissy in the winter and in cold weather. It's purely why I moved to California. So can I handle it? <laughs> you know, like, will I be okay? And if we come back to California, maybe we don't want to stay in Oceanside, California. Maybe we want to try out other areas. Another thought is like we could VRBO different spots for a month or two at a time just to get our fix, maybe during the winter and then go back to Colorado. And as you know, I've shared this on the show too. I have this dream of owning an apartment in New York City and we, I would love to live in the city too. So, you know, it's a lot of like back and forth, back and forth. And so selling feels like maybe not the right thing to do because we could turn this into an investment. So then we go into the VRBO. Now we're in a, we have an HOA. It's got to be a minimum of 30 days that's rent out. So, um, that is kind of challenging after I did all the math. And unfortunately I did like really detailed math later. I wish I would have started there. Um, I realized that we're probably going to lose 
tens of thousands of dollars if we do the vacation home option because we do have that 30 day minimum and we, we still have to run like all the utilities and Wi-Fi and all the things. Um, plus we have fees through Airbnb or VRBO. You have a cleaning fee, you know, a property manager possibly we might need. So we did, I feel like we ruled that out. We love that option though, because then we could have access to our house. We could block, you know, if something's coming, going on here in California, or we just want to come out for a vacation, we could block it and come back. But anyways, then renting and, um, you know, my family, uh, several family members have, are against the whole renting aspect. Like they just feel like it's too much to deal with. You might get bad renters in. There's more liability and risk. Um, Dustin and I did actually rent out our house in Temecula for a year and we had seriously like the worst case scenario ever. Um, we had a family, it was mom and dad and their like 16 year old daughter and then grandma. And they all seemed so lovely and they just checked out background check financials. It was great. We didn't actually get to meet the daughter, but we met mom, dad, and grandma And uh, come to find out, daughter had a like 19, 20 year old boyfriend who was on meth and I'm pretty sure was selling meth and started living in our garage and dad and boyfriend started physically fighting. And at one point the ambulance and fire truck was there. Um, so our neighbors, they knew Dustin and had his phone number and they're all texting and calling him while we're on vacation. We're trying to deal with that. Um, they, there was damage like punching holes through walls and damage to doors. They caught, they set our patio furniture on fire. I think they were doing drugs out back and caught the furniture on fire. Um, just very like just a terrible situation for our first rental. So like that's kind of in the back of your head, right? I feel like we're in a nicer neighborhood now and the price point is higher. So hopefully we would pull in somebody that's a little bit better. Um, like more, like I would love just a senior couple who has a small dog that would just love living here. You know, we have very senior neighborhood. It's a senior neighborhood. So, um, anyways, that's kind of where we're at, but we could cash flow and it could be an investment and having somebody else pay our mortgage plus a little extra would be great. But then at the same time, I have ideas of if we sell this property high and then um, we could reinvest that money in some other different ways. And then there's a lot of different ways we can reinvest it. Um, and I, you know, I kind of want to get a little bit more involved in crypto. I want to still be involved in real estate. I have some other ideas. So like, of course there's indecisiveness, right? Because these are really big decisions. And I, I Googled just prepping for the show. I Googled, um, uh, how to be more decisive. <laughs> and here were some of the things that they, that all sorts of people and articles recommended. Um, one was eliminate options. So, I feel like we did that. And and by the way, if you're going through any kind of decision in your life right now where you're feeling indecisive or not sure what to do, I hope some of these tips help you. Um, eliminate options. So we, we were able to eliminate that vacation home one, right? Like we're just going to spend too much money. We're not looking to have double mortgage here. So let's rule that out. Otherwise, I feel like it's kind of hard to rule anything out at this point. One said, embrace uncertainty hold wholeheartedly. And I am feeling a little bit like I have to just really make a decision and then trust that it's the right one. I don't always know what the outcome is going to be. And I just have to fully embrace the uncertainty of the future and then just stop changing and move forward. Um, because we're actually like losing time when we keep going back and forth because we had our house on VRBO, then we started renting it and then we had it on VRBO. Like we took it on, we took it off, we took it on, we took it off. We, and the time you spend adding, making your listing great and taking it down and then going to rent and then it, answering everybody's inquiries and showing it to rent. And then you decide, Oh, we're going to vacation rent it. It's like, Oh my gosh, we're wasting so much time. We need to focus on one thing. One thing that I found in my research is that inaction is more damaging. So you actually increase your chances of failing 
by not deciding. And I feel like the clock is ticking. So we really need to just commit to something and be done. Um, I did through my research too, the most common reason for indecisiveness is fear of failure. And like, as you can imagine, of course, there's a lot of fear around this decision because it's very permanent, especially in the case of selling. Right. So I, for me, I think that's like the, I'm more comfortable with the renting option than selling, I think, because that is so permanent where we could get out to Colorado and we could be like, this is amazing. Let's just sell the house. You know, we don't want to be, we don't want to be landlords or we get out there and we're like, well, we don't want to be in Colorado. And I don't, I don't know. Right. So, um, but I just, we need to really (laughs) clock is ticking. We need to make a choice. Um, So next up of how to be more decisive, get clarity on priorities. And that's something that Dustin and I keep talking about. But honestly, like we have a lot of different ideas of what the future can look like, that it's not necessarily so specific that we're going to come back here in two years and live in this exact house. And then we're going to rent out Colorado or whatever. Like we've got a lot of options and I'm so incredibly grateful for our options. Um, but that makes it kind of hard on getting clear on some of those priorities, but depending on maybe a decision you're trying to make that could help you overcome perfectionism. Um, you know, and, and that's kind of, for me, part of it is like just wanting to make the right decision. I wish I had a crystal ball and I could look into the future and know what was the right decision for us. And I, I just don't know that. So I need going back to that keyword. I just need to trust the decision. Um, now this one's funny, uh, for how to be more decisive, let go of your need for control. And it's funny because, um, a few weeks ago, Pauline was over here at our house and me, her and Dustin were in the kitchen talking just about like me. And I think the move and, uh, we totally were talking about how like I need to be in control. I'm just really realizing lately that I need to have control. And uh, two weeks ago, I got my natal chart through like astrology read with numerology by this um, woman who's been doing it here for over 20 years. Um, It was over the phone, but she happens to be local. And the first thing she said to me after she ran my birth date is um, she said, you always need to be in control, huh? It was like, hi, I'm Pam. Nice to meet you. Okay. What's your birth date? Okay, great. So you always need to be in control, huh? It was like the next thing she said, she just dove right in and I just started laughing. <laughs> I was like, yes. Um, and maybe I'll do a, uh, episode about that session because if you're into any of that, like we talked about my past lives and unfortunately it was really dark. Um, but it explained a lot of why and who I am today. If you believe in that stuff, I know not everybody does, and that's totally fine. Um, but maybe I'll share in a future episode. But anyways, the first thing was like, you need to be in control. And that's where I feel kind of out of control with this decision, because there are a lot of variables. Like if we did sell and then the market crashes in our house, like it takes a lot longer to rebuild back at that value. Will I have regret that we didn't sell, but that's out of my control. You know, like I just have to let go of that. Or if we find a renter, we could do our best to find a great renter, but that doesn't always mean that they're going to be great. Doesn't mean that they don't have a meth addict boyfriend who lives in the garage, right? (laughs) Because that can happen. Um, unfortunately, but I think it's just doing your due diligence and the best that you can. And then again, trusting. So Um, Another one was stop asking for reassurance. And I have totally been asking a lot of people their opinions because I wanted it to help kind of guide me. And unfortunately, part of me wonders if that's been bad, even though I started this by saying, I want help. Like if you have any um, advice on either how to be more decisive or on this specific situation of renting or selling, I'm asking for advice and I just get like, some people are totally for selling and some people are totally for renting. There's just not this clear option where it's like the writing is on the wall. Yes, this is what you need to do. And I wish so badly that I could have that because for me in the past, how I've made bigger decisions, like moving to California 
you know, it was just me and my dog bruiser drove out here in a car and moved to California. I had a cousin here and a friend here and that was it. Um, or going to Pittsburgh for a job or moving houses from one house I really liked into this one. Or even when I was, um, just out of, uh, a college, a couple of years out of college and I was finding a place to live. Like I looked at so many places and for me, these decisions come from a vision. Like I can see it. I'll never forget. I walked into this apartment once a couple of years out of college and immediately it was like, this is where I'm supposed to see, be. I can see myself sitting on this patio in a patio chair with a laptop and bruisers on my lap with me. And I'm looking out at the trees and I'm working. And I was like, whoa, this is so weird that this, I have that vision because my job at the time, I had to go in Monday through Friday, nine to five, like a office job sort of. Um, and we were not allowed to work from home and I didn't like work from home from a computer. So I was like, why am I seeing that? Well, just like one to two months later, I quit that job and started my first business, three elements, um, where we did social media, marketing and PR. And, uh, and then one day I'm sitting there in the patio for, uh, you know, on the patio chair with bruiser laptop, looking out on the trees, working hard. And I'm like, holy shit, I I'm living the vision. Like the vision is happening. I just didn't even realize because I saw a glimpse of it and was like, this must be my apartment. And then I forgot about that moment. I forgot about that vision until all of a sudden I was in it and recognized it. So I feel like I'm waiting for something similar of like, I see the vision. I feel it. It feels so right. And both of these options just don't, it just keeps going back and forth. Um, so, you know, I just, I don't know. The other thing <laughs> that, as you could see, there's a lot of frustration with this, but, um, another thing for how to be more decisive was to tackle decision fatigue. And Mark Zuckerberg, uh, you know, Steve Jobs was this way too where they only had one to two, like just a couple of outfits, you know, like a bunch of the same t-shirt and jeans. So you don't have to think, you don't have to decide what you're going to wear. That's one less thing we have to decide on. And I love that. I feel like there's so many decisions right now I need to make as in regards to like our living situation, the timing of everything. What am I taking? What am I selling? Um, are we storing anything? Like, there's a ton of decisions when you're moving. Then I also run a business and we're pretty head down trying to scale the business and grow it. So there's a lot of decisions there. Um, and so if, if anything, if I can just kind of minimize how many decisions I have to make a day, I know that that will help me, but that's where I'm feeling like once I can fully commit to this decision, it's going to free up a lot of mental energy for my other decisions. So Like I said, in my heart of hearts, I really feel like I need to just trust. And honestly, I haven't really given myself time to like, I see myself just sitting outside in the grass for maybe an hour with no music, no phone, no dust in dogs can be there. That's fine. They do their own thing, but like really asking myself questions and trying to close my eyes and see myself in the two different scenarios and what makes sense and really see if I can see it then and visualize it. And unfortunately, I just feel like I haven't had the mental energy to do that. I'm so exhausted and I just haven't unfortunately made the time for it either. It hasn't been, I guess, that big of a priority because that's a topic I want to talk about on the show one day is just how people say I don't have time. And I really feel like that's just, it's not a priority. It's not that you don't have time because look at, I mean, we can get a lot of shit done if we prioritize it, if it's important to us, you know, if we put our our head into it, but put your back into it, we could get it done. So, you know, maybe I'm like scared of what my heart will say, or I'm just so caught up in all the to do's that I'm not even giving myself that moment, but saying this and processing it out loud here on the show, um, is definitely helping me and definitely realizing some things I need to do. So, um, that, you know, I, I feel like there's times in my life when I can just be so decisive and I know, and it's like, make the decision, make the decision. And, um, I feel like I can make decisions easier in business because I just feel like, well, we'll learn from it. Like if it's the wrong decision, I know that we'll learn from it. And I guess personally, 
I have more fear of like learning from it. Um, and especially since it's such a big one, but, but if you're struggling with this, know of someone who is, I hope some of these tips help. And again, if you have tips that help you get to a decision that you're confident in, leave a comment on this blog, on this YouTube video, DM me on Instagram, email me cheers at crystaluncork.com. I want to hear from you. Next week's episode is with Aubrey Terrazas of Palette Club. We are talking about wines. We are talking about what it's like to be a woman in a very male dominated industry. Um, I just really love this episode because we actually get more into wine education, which we don't do a whole lot on the show. She also has some tips if there are any women wanting to get into the wine industry. And I feel like what we talk about can apply to any industry. Uh, so I hope that you tune into that episode and I look forward to seeing some of your tips from today. Again, thank you, thank you, thank you for listening, watching, be a part of the show. It means the world to me. Cheers, and I'll see you on the next See You. Bye. Thank you so much for listening. Are you on Instagram? I'd love to see pictures of you listening to the show, a screenshot of your favorite episode, and or your favorite wines. Share them with me. Just follow and tag at Crystal Uncorked. I can't wait to see you there. All right, I'll see you on the next See You.